Hi Joma, it's Glenn. This is a, the, a plasma ball. This is the power source of choice for gas dis emission discharge tubes such as this neon tube. This neon tube, I just hold the, the end of it and I apply the other end to touch the glass and boom, uh, boom, there it is, uh, neon. Mm -hmm. That's the uh, spectrum, uh, emission spectrum. That's great. Uh, so I have these tubes in uh, triangular prism boxes with sponge at the end, and this is this is xenon. You know, I find it works best if you uh, if you uh, touch an edge of the metal tip to the glass ball. Hmm. Now, uh, I like this because it is safe. I don't smell any ozone. Um, the, the voltage is high in there, but it's not, it's not millions of volts. I'm going to put the, uh, the neon back in here. These boxes are labeled with a little sticker that says the element in them. I want to show you nitrogen and helium. Um, this one is, uh, there's a sticker on here. This one is nitrogen, N2, molecular nitrogen. Um, when I try to make a plasma inside the molecular nitrogen tube, it doesn't work. And I think it's because uh, the voltage isn't high enough in there. I think the plasma ball is given maybe a few thousand, maybe tens of thousands of volts. But uh, the nitrogen excitation might require maybe more tens of thousands or perhaps a million or a hundred thousand. I'm not sure what the voltage of this Tesla coil that I'm leaving you here with is. This is a handheld Tesla coil and it is attached to a uh, switchable power supply there. Um, it's a, there's an on-off switch on this ordinary power strip. You gotta have the on-off switch because there is no on-off switch whoops, on the Tesla coil. Uh, the Tesla coil is only designed for 10 minute bursts. Shorter preferably. Uh, the, 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 the voltage gets really high. Hundreds of thousands, perhaps even I, I doubt it's millions, but uh, per, per hundreds of thousands or close to hundreds of thousands, hundred thousand volts. So I'll turn this on. There is a rumor among handheld Tesla coil users that the Tesla coil uh, emits x-rays because the frequency is high and the voltage is high. So here I'm switching between molecular nitrogen, which when you make it a plasma, I guess it's no longer molecular, <laughs> and uh, helium. The, volt, the, 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 the voltage is high enough to light up those tubes. I'm going to turn this off. If you smell the air, there's ozone in the air because this voltage is that high. There's a lot of ozone here. So I don't like to use the Tesla coil if I don't have to. For, for, for nitrogen and helium, you have to. If you want to show the kids the helium spectrum or the nitrogen spectrum, you need to do that. Here's helium on the plasma ball weak sauce. Uh, so that's why I brought you the Tesla coil. I'm going to leave it in the same box, this big box. I'm going to turn on the lights now to show you the Bunsen burners. They're not Bunsen burners, the butane burners. Woo! Okay, there it is. That's bright. So these are the butane burners. There are three of them and they're full of butane. Uh, it's in the liquid state inside. So <clears throat> The, uh, because the, they're so small and they contain their own butane, kids shouldn't leave them on while they're doing other lab stuff. Uh, they should turn them off and then turn them back on. This is how you turn it on. You hear that? You gotta push this and turn. And then this is how you, turn, how you, how you light it. The ignition is piezoelectric and um, the flame is blue. There's traces of orange in that flame. I'm not sure why. I think there might be sodium contamination from previous, from previous from previous experiments perhaps, I'm not sure. Or it might be that the flame isn't as hot as, uh, isn't as concentrated so th and therefore not as hot as, uh, as, a, as a butane flame could be. But uh, uh, in case you run out of butane in one of these, I have brought for you extra butane. But it's important, I think, that you do not fill the burner while another burner is on near it because the filling process is very leaky. 
the butane will have dropped to the ground being heavier than air but uh, just to be safe you don't want to have kids filling uh, a butane burner while another butane burner is in operation or is going to be operation in the vicinity so uh, the uh, the filling procedure is what I'm going to show you now uh, there is a it, it's just an open hole there and the butane uh, tank has a stem here and you just push the stem into the hole the hole actually the, the, the hole the hole is, is a little, there's a little nipple there and it fits inside uh, this, uh, the, the, this plastic stem. And you just push and butane enters. You can tell the butane is entering if when you feel the edge here, the temperature drops drastically. All right, now you know when this is full of butane, when uh, butane splatters out. You see that? The, uh, right now butane is splattering out. Oh, I'm sorry, you can't see that. But you can hear it, right? That means this is full, and it shouldn't be filled anymore. Uh, now, you, you saw how leaky the filling process is. It is leaky, and also when it's full, it splatters out, and it hisses out, it, it, it hisses out until the pressure in here is a safe pressure. So while this is hissing out, you don't want kids turning on another butane burner in the vicinity. So, uh, that's why it's important for kids to turn off the burner. Um, I mean, that's why it's important for kids to fill the burner only when all the burners are off in the room. And in fact, any ignition source in the room is not on. You know what I mean? Um, so, uh, if you have any questions, just send me a text and, or send me an email. And I think this is all that you need to know from me. Thank you, Joma.